Okay, so I'm gonna go from the floor up 12. to the bottom, and it looks like about 12 inches, 12 and a sixteenth maybe to the bottom. And you know what? This is an exterior wall, and I feel air coming out of here, even though uh, there's a cavity in here before the outside. So if you if if you want for energy efficiency on all your exterior walls, you get these little foam plates on the back, and then you punch out what what you need for either a light switch or this, or you can get the plug ones or a light switch one, and then you put that foam over that, and it covers that up. Then you put your cover plate on that, and that kind of spooges and kind of sandwiches it down into place. There's a tip for you. Okay, well, I can do it 12 inches to the bottom, but ultimately, this big little box right there, that transformer is going to be plugged into it, and that sticks down a little bit, a couple inches. So I might want to put the plug up a little bit higher. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. If somebody's standing back, they might see it underneath there, but, you know, more more times than not, somebody's got a chair. True. You've got a chair right here or something, and you don't really see that. But because we haven't installed it yet, could you go up higher? Yeah. You can go up a little higher. You don't necessarily have to match an existing electrical no. duplex outlet because this is kind of a standalone one. So we'll make up our own mind. And when you measure your box, you can, you can measure it with a tape measure. Just make sure that you don't go up to this tab because that's what holds it. So you would go from that edge to this edge on the height. And then the width, obviously, is just sideways. But if you don't want to do that, if you're good at eyeballing and stuff, I mean, you could hold it up like that, line it up, or get two measurements on the side or something. And then you can draw a pencil around there. Boom, boom, boom. And another one down at the bottom. Make sure you don't mark up here. You want to mark right there and down the sides. And then you can fill it in and you can cut it out that way. Two different ways you can do that. Now before I cut it in, I'm just I'm just doing it like this to see where the stud is. I don't have a stud finder with me, and you can use a stud finder too. But I know the stud is right there. I don't want to get too close to that edge when I put this up, okay? So what I'm gonna do yeah, is I'm gonna just make a little inspection hole up there and I'll use a wire and probe in there just a little bit before I cut my hole. The worst thing that you do, you don't want to mark it, make an assumption, and, and start cutting out the hole and be halfway done. You've already got one side cut. Uh-oh, here's a stud. And had you have known, you could have moved it over. you got big marks that you can't get off. Or you've, you've cut too much, and now you've got to patch your wall or caulk it in or something because, oops, there's the stud. I should have moved it over. Oh, drat. Okay, so I'm going to cut a little inspection hole now. And I made it a couple inches higher. And I'm just going to poke this in. And I'm going to pray that there's no stud right over here, and I don't think there is. like to do these by hand with a saw like this and not a sawzall or anything so I can feel around make sure that I'm not hitting a wire or a plumbing pipe What's or you know anything like that okay there's the first step let me get a little probing wire <laughs> 